So with all that happening, it makes you wonder, what are we really measuring? It's amazing, Anthony. So when you pointed out all of this to the experts, they're at the National Climate Data Center, NOAA's big center in charge of climate data. What did they do? Well, initially, they blocked my project. They shut down their database of public information two weeks after I started the project. And so we petitioned saying that this is wrong, and we won, and they put it back online. And then they invited me out to discuss my findings, which I did. I went to the Weather Center there, the National Climatic Data Center in Asheville, North Carolina, in April of 2008, and I presented my preliminary findings. And they were interested in it, but they didn't do anything about it just then. But then they started getting more interested as we started finding more and more problems. Well, in their response to our first program, NCDC explained that they established a premium weather station network to compare with these national measurements that you have been explaining. And uh, the premium group of stations, according to them, came up with the same temperature averages as they had been getting, proving actually, Anthony, there's nothing wrong with their data. How do you respond? Well, I would point out that that new network, which I endorse and I think is an excellent idea, and I've looked at these stations, they're well done, has only been running for about a year and a half. So they don't have a data set that goes back 100 years. They don't have a data set that really we can say anything statistically significant about. When you've only got a year and a half of data out of over 100 years of data and you try to make that comparison, it's just not statistically significant. Well, is what you're talking about just bad science, in your opinion? Or do you think that the NCDC is manipulating temperature averages on purpose to support the global warming agenda? I don't think it's a purposeful thing. I think it's an accidental thing. Change happens. We've had buildings grow up around weather stations. We've had parking lots spring up around weather stations. This is all part of our natural process of urbanization and advancement over the last hundred years here in America and in the world. So this is something that just, I think, got away from them, and they weren't really aware of it until someone pointed out. Well, are you volunteering to take over the NCDC and straighten <laughs> it out? Well, I have many other things to do with my life. I'll be happy to point out problems and hope that other people fix them. And Anthony, are you a skeptic about CO2 as a global warming gas? CO2 has a component. That is indisputable. It does have a factor in warming our Earth. But it's also a lot like salting soup. You know, if you salt your soup, and it, you salt it to taste, and you think, maybe I need a little more salt. Well, you add some more salt, and all of a sudden it's too salty. No more additional salt will make any difference. It's still going to be too salty. Well, CO2 is a lot like that in its response in the atmosphere. It's a logarithmic response. The curve is flat, and we're up near the top right now. So additional CO2, while it may have a little bit of effect, isn't going to have a lot of effect like the first bit of CO2 that was added. Well, thanks very much for being with us, Anthony Watts.